Doing well. Uh, yeah, I anticipate him playing. I assume, Quinn, the decision will be not public until tomorrow, or have you already come to that? Uh, we're still working, you know, through some things when it comes to, um, you know, whether we redshirt anybody at this point or not. So I'm not going to, um, you know, comment on it just yet. Are you excited that season's finally starting? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, you know, you have nerves. Starting it off with a conference game uh, is very unique, but it's uh, it's a challenge for our team. I'm interested to see interested to see where we're at, and uh, you know we're going down there with the intention of winning the game. And we know it's not going to be easy, but yeah, we're very excited. Do you uh, coach differently in a conference opener versus a regular season opener against conference? I don't think I coach differently. Um, I think there was a little bit more urgency to have more in the playbook than maybe in previous years, but we were balancing that with, you know, also having seven newcomers, uh, six of which were freshmen. So, um, you know, we, we know Miami and, and, and what they're going to present and the different defenses they play, uh, the strength of their team and how they play offense. So, uh, you know, for me, you know, we, we've really used the last week or so to really hone in on, on being as sharp as we can in those areas. Uh, with lineups, substitution patterns. Uh, I think we're, we'll still be feeling our way through things to say everything's cemented, especially when you've had uh, guys going in and out of the lineup uh, or in and out of practice, you know, because of injury. I know David and Malik's injuries have been longer, but you know we've had other guys that have gone down, whether it's Quinn, whether it's Steven. Uh, so you know there have always been uh, adjustments throughout this preseason. Well, I think that the season's a long one. And those teams that, um, you know, everybody starts out with great intentions. Uh, but those teams that can you know, stick together through tough times, uh, through adversity, uh, they can continue uh, enjoying coming to practice and wanting to improve and, and getting better. And a lot of times, at least I've found, you know, what, what does your leadership look like? You know, what, what is the character of those guys, whether they're freshmen or whether they're seniors? You know, for, for me as a head coach, you know, we've always been led by our oldest players. And um, those are the guys that have to set the tone uh, with how they approach practice every single day. If it becomes mundane in the months of February uh, and March, uh, you're not going to get much better. And uh, it's going to be a short ending. Some teams, some teams become dysfunctional, and I think it's a part of their, uh, their, their leadership and, and how they approach practice when things don't go well for them individually or well for, for them as a team. Um, but, yeah, some teams do get better. Some teams continue to improve, and that's the quest for us is, is to be a team that continues to get better. I don't know about a percentage. Um, we have enough um, to be successful. And it's not going to be one or two more plays that needed to be added uh, in order to win a game uh, this early in the season. It's going to be our ability to execute the ones that we have in. And that same thing could be said for Miami. So I think as a coach, sure, you'd love to have every possible um, play, scenario, situation covered. Uh, but I just think it's an impossibility. And so. Uh, we're going to have to uh, deal with what happens, uh, figure it out, uh, learn from a win or a loss, no matter what happens tomorrow night. But, uh, you know, I, I do feel or I do find great comfort in the fact I feel like we're as fully prepared as we can be uh, on November 4th. Chris Likes, what do you see with him on film? He's just so fast, but he's actually, each year it seems like he's improved uh, on his basketball skills. Well, I mean, my first go around against them was last year and, um, you know, single handedly in the first half, um, you know, put the team on his back. You know, he hit a three, he got fouled, he got in the lane. Uh, he's a pest defensively. Uh, offensively, he's just so hard to contain because he's so small. Um, and a lot of times when guys are, are smaller in statue, they're not the, the lights out shooter that he can be. And he can really get, uh, you know, he, he can really get on a heater and, and knock threes from deep and then you know when you help he's such a terrific passer um, 
you know, he uses his size well, his, his craftiness to get the ball in the lane, his quickness. And then he's got guys like Vasilovich and this year McGusty who, uh, you know, can knock down a three-pointer. So our ability to contain him, easier said than done, is, is a huge key tomorrow night. Sort of a tale of two halves. I know that, um, you know, they came out and and really punched us in the mouth, and I thought we had a really good response. Um, You know, we started off the game uh, switching several ball screens um, to try to eliminate confusion, and we probably added more to the confusion um, than than we negated it, and it cost us. We got ourselves in a hole, um, but uh, we were resilient enough to fight back they played a, a variety of different defenses from man to man um, to a zone matchup to a box in one. And so, um, you know, obviously Jordan had a terrific game that night as well, and so did Malik Williams. Do you have much of a relationship with Jim Laranaga? I mean, I know Jim. Obviously, he's in the league, but, um, you know, it's not like we go back a long way or, you know, we're not in the, the same coaching, coaching tree. Uh, so I, I can't say that I know him particularly well other than just being a – uh, an ACC opponent. What does he kind of expect from them? They, they do have a few newcomers uh, that probably will see some some time. Yeah, I mean, what I expect from him is is likes to be the the straw that stirs their drink. I mean, he gets in the lane, he makes guys better. Um, you know, Rodney Miller's coming off of a redshirt year. Um, you know, he had a terrific game against Flagler. I can go over either shoulder. Um, They've got, some, they've got some weapons offensively, and they're going to try to confuse you a little bit defensively by changing their defenses. So we have to be prepared to be able to handle both man-to-man uh, and their um, matchup zone. In the exhibition, you said you, know, they, you guys didn't get as many paint touches as, as you would have liked, and that's probably going to, you would think, increase now with Steve back. But what's the key to making sure that that's happening? Being patient. Uh, executing what we're running, uh, screening bodies, you know, causing people to help and rotate. Um, if we're just interchanging on the perimeter uh, on offense, uh, we're never going to get guys out of position in order to get in the lane. Again, whether that's a post feed or a drive uh, or a screening action that, that puts the ball in the paint, that's, that's what we need to do. I think that's what good offensive teams do. And... Um, you know, I thought we got better uh, from Ohio State to Bellarmine. We need to take a big step forward from Bellarmine to Miami. 33 hours from now, you'll have a result. What, what question do you want most to resolve in your own mind if you won? Uh, if we won. <laughs> <laughs> Personnel. Um, I just expect our team to be the same you know, team that I see every day on the practice floor, uh, to not get a uh, deer in headlights look. Um, or go outside of what we work on every single day, uh, to not take quick shots or turn the ball over because we're in a hurry, um, to be able to communicate on the defensive end like we do in practice. Um, and then the, the question that I'll be most interested in is, you know, where do we go from here? Um, you know, we have to be able, like I said before, Tim, to, to learn through a win or a loss and uh, improve upon that. And so early in the season that there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to clean up regardless of the outcome tomorrow night. I'm sure Miami feels the same way. When you want to focus on keeping the ball out of the lane, is, does that just come down to keeping your guy in front of you or making sure you always have your hands up? Like, What are all the little pieces that go into that? There's a lot. Uh, I think it starts with what you talked about, being able to contain the dribbler, um, being able to be extremely solid uh, with your ball screen defense. Miami's going to set more on-ball screens than maybe any team we play all year. Uh, and again, I think the guy that has the ball in his hands through the majority of those, uh, is the quickest guy in the league or one of the quickest. So uh, our ability to guard one-on-one in space, our ability to uh, contain ball screens as best we can, and, uh, you know, fight the front when somebody's trying to post up. Those are ways that you keep the ball out of the lane. But uh, to address, you know, all different types of screening actions that we'll see, uh, you know, throughout the course of the season, uh, that's, that's just a way that, you know, you have to figure out how to keep the ball out of there. Miami tries to do it with space um, by keeping their, their perimeter players really spaced and, and allowing a guy like Likes to get in the lane, and we have to try to prevent that. Anything else, Coach? Thank you. Thank you.